Over the last year, I've relied on everything from tents to hotel rooms to travel trailers to stay in while on the road. Now I'm starting to see why van life is such a huge topic. When you have a van, you can park it anywhere and go to sleep. Vans fit in normal parking spots. They blend in. For mountain biking or any other outdoor activity, they're stealthy and tough to beat. While I would love a van, I can't justify another vehicle right now. I need me some van life without a van. On YouTube, you'll find thousands of different camping setups in SUVs, pickups, and everything in between. These videos prove that you can camp, or cramp rather, in almost any vehicle. In fact, some of these builds are so inspiring that they can make you envious of someone living out of their car. My car is a 2017 Honda Ridgeline, which I use for everything from hauling bikes, to hauling wood, to towing. So whatever I do with it needs to be temporary and easy to break down. Being that it's a pickup, my best option is to throw a shell on it and sleep in the back. The bed is only 5.5 feet, but my sleeping pad fits in it diagonally. So that's a start. For shelter, I decided to go with this soft topper. I didn't even know these existed until I traveled out west, where I saw them everywhere. It's easy to take on and off, surprisingly sturdy, and even possible to fold back like a convertible. It doesn't offer security like a hard shell would, but it sure does beat pitching a tent. So with the help of my soft topper, my sleeping pad, and a few other goodies, my ridgeline has everything I need to boondock for the night. But cramping isn't my style. To get the most out of my pickup bed, we'll need to build something. Where's the sink? The, the sink? The, not the, the faucet. The faucet? I thought you had that beer thing. Oh, we're gonna use the beer tap? Wasn't that the plan? I was. I thought that I was thought... for dispensing beer. Oh. The last thing Johnny built for us was a butcher's block in the shape of a kicker ramp. Despite it functioning very well as both a cutting board and a kicker, it didn't offer any real utility. Today's project will actually be practical. I gotta learn how to use this. You know it's about to go down when Johnny busts out Google SketchUp. By making a 3D model, we could experiment with different ideas before cutting a single piece of wood. Our design took into account that the sleeping pad would lay diagonally. We decided to build a triangular cabinet with storage, running water, and USB charging. We designed the door to open from the top, since the sleeping bag would get in the way of anything else. On the door would be two little shelves, which would also act as support legs for the work desk. For fresh water, we decided to use this pressurized beer growler, which would sit on top. Below that, a metal bowl as a sink. With the computer model taking shape, I was getting really excited about this build. Johnny used relatively thin plywood to save weight. Most of the pieces were just rectangles and triangles, but the countertop was a little more involved. It would need a hole for the sink, plus a tricky indentation to keep the growler in place. For this, we used Johnny's CNC machine, which uses a computer model to mill shapes into wood. 10 3 quarter minus the lip, which is, we could probably go 10 inches, a 10 inch circle. To make these cuts without a CNC would be totally possible but not easy to do precisely. Okay, moment of truth. Ho! Believe it or not, but that CNC machine is not Johnny's coolest shop tool. This is. It's a fucking laser. We use this to etch our channel logos into the sink cover, which I'll show you later. Time to assemble the cabinet. Johnny is using this machine to drill pocket holes. Because we're using thin plywood, these pocket holes are the strongest way to hold everything together. The alternative would be to go right into the end grain or use metal hardware. I like how I did that whole SketchUp model. I haven't even referenced it once. With the basic shape together, we did a test fit in the bed to see how things fit. Oh yeah. Wow, and then we got space for the battery right back there. Dude, that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, perfect. It was time to move on to the details.
this hole is for the USB port. Good. I got this port off Amazon, which just fits in the hole and stays in place with a nut. These wires will plug into a storage battery in the back. For extra storage inside the cabinet, we screwed mason jar lids to the underside of the countertop. We felt really Pinteresty after doing that. That's it. There's my toothbrush and toothpaste and everything right there. <laughs> Lastly, we installed the little shelves that would support the workstation. Wow. I can't believe how light it is. It's totally manageable. It's totally manageable. You it's not it. like a big deal. It needs yeah. one more thing. Hold on, before you put it in there. Hell yeah, sharp. To anchor the cabinet, we use this carabiner, which features a locking nylon string. It's not high tech, but it works. The cabinet fits perfectly, and there's enough room on the other side of the bed for a cooler. Since the cabinet opens from the top, I never need to worry about my sleeping bag or pillow getting in the way of it opening. Once resting on the floor, it works surprisingly well as a workstation. Even the mason jars serve their purpose exactly as intended. I honestly thought this project would just be fun, and that the sink would be totally impractical and just good for YouTube entertainment, but I'm starting to really like the concept. For personal hygiene, cooking, or just refilling a glass of water, it feels like home. When I want more counter space, I can use this awesome sink cover. All my riding gear and tools normally go in this underbed storage compartment, so this cabinet can be totally dedicated to clean clothes, toiletries, snacks, and whatever I need for a few days on the road. Needless to say, I'm very happy with this cabinet. Now I can spend the night anywhere comfortably. Although we used computer modeling, a woodworking YouTuber, his CNC machine, and a f laser, you could build a less refined version of this with just a drill and a saw. As a solution for a short box pickup, this may be the only way to go. Thanks to Johnny for making this project possible. To see the actual build in more detail, subscribe to Crafted Workshop, which I've linked to in the description. I also dropped a link to our last project, the cutting board kicker ramp. I know this video is a little different, but camping is a huge part of mountain biking, or any other outdoor sport for that matter. I want to know what you guys think in the comments section, but I also want to start a discussion on camping as it relates to mountain biking. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Oh, that looks pretty freaking slick. Yeah, so actually. that way, when you go to rotate it, you come down 90, and it's going to make this a lot more secure, and then we still have the chain or whatever.